Shalom, everybody. I hope you had a wonderful week. I'm Rabbi Jessica Graff. I'm here with Rabbi Abby Phelps. But who, oh, why am I echoing? But who cares about us? Most importantly, we're here with Cantor Toby Glaser, our brand new Cantor. I think 20 years from now, I'm still going to introduce you as our Cantor from Australia. We are so delighted that you have finally joined our team along with Jonathan Dimmick, who will bring us beautiful, spiritual, prayerful music tonight and on the Shabbat tote and, and all days going forward. So we're so thrilled to have you and I want to give you a chance to introduce yourself after all these weeks of waiting to be here. <laughs> it's so wonderful to be here after observing for a few weeks. Obviously, we know uh, the role of a cantor is a title um, and I earned that title through many hard years of study, but... Uh, Really, the role of Cantor is, is a position of service. And uh, so every Shabbat, you know, the past four or five weeks, I've said, is this my last Shabbat before I'm really a Cantor? And so thank you all just uh, so much for being here and joining me on this journey to, to really fulfill my position <clears throat> and my dream to, uh, to be a Cantor in your community. So it's, it's wonderful to be here and Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. We're really, really, really thrilled to have you. And we've been so blessed to have Cantor Richard Newman, who has been with us over the summer transition as Cantor Fromer moved east and Cantor Glaser hadn't yet been with us, been able to arrive here. So all of you will have a chance to meet Cantor Glaser and to get to know him, to study with him and learn with him and sing with him and pray with him. And over these um, next weeks and months, there'll be many opportunities for you to get a chance to hear his fabulous accent and, uh, and also his fabulous Torah. I want to just say a huge thank you to the people who are on the Cantorial Search Committee and the board who believed in this idea of bringing our wonderful new cantor here and really got us to this place. We'll say Shehechianu later in the service for many things, but chief among them on this Shabbat is your arrival, cantor. So we're so delighted. I'd like Shabbat Shalom. Welcome back, everyone. I hope you all got a chance to greet one another, to share some excitement from the last week. Uh, I got to share about delightful conversations that I had with our teens this afternoon that covered both uh, Jewish visual art and uh, the stuffed animals that we most love. So I hope everyone had uh, a wonderful opportunity to check in. And now uh, we're going to go ahead and start our service. And I am very excited to introduce a family that's joining us this evening. The Kleins are with us. I believe we're going to spotlight them shortly. But David and Jessica Klein are out there. Aha! Yes, with Logan. Oh, heavens, small meltdown. With Logan, who recently turned five, and with Avalyn, who's turning two on Sunday. Well, happy oh. birthday, guys. Hello. Oh, poor Avalyn. <laughs> oh, right, Logan, it's, nice right? it's my party, and I'll cry if I want to, so she can do whatever she wants. Yeah, she's. Yep. She turns two in two days, so. She's really she's, excited uh, about the parent. hot tub right now. Wonderful. Well, I would be excited about the hot tub too. I can understand that. Do you, uh, do you have candles to light for us? We do. Wonderful. Logan, you doing all right out there? Yeah. Good, good. <laughs> I want you to keep cracking me up. I want you, uh, you want to help me, buddy? Me laugh. Are you, you guys ready? Should we, uh, mm -hmm. light the Anytime candle? you want, go right ahead. Uh, you want to help me? Excellent. Now, please join me in bringing the light into our eyes, the light of Shabbat, 
And our cantor, Cantor Glaser, so excited to be able to say that, will lead us in the blessing. Baruch Hazah Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Kirshanu B'mitzvotav, V'tzivanu, Lehadlik Ner, Lehadlik Ner, Shel Shabbat. Awesome. We'll continue welcoming the angels of Shabbat into our midst. We could use a little bit of joy, a little bit of peace, a little bit of Angel time, bring it on, the Chadodi. <clears throat> Nekabela <laughs> Hene Shabbat, Nekabela. Shabbat <laughs> Shalom <laughs> We continue with the bar of food, the call to worship. If you are able to stand, please do so. Yeah, 
Hear, O Israel, Adonai is our God, Adonai is one. We continue with the words. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Baruch Shem Kevod Malchuto Leolam Vaed Whenever we come together as a Jewish community, we tell the story of our freedom, freedom from the narrow place, from Mitzrayim, from Egypt, from slavery. We are able to remember our sense of self because we remember where we came from. And we're inspired always to help others to attain that freedom and to ensure that everybody has that freedom. We think especially now of all the narrow places that enslave us as we find ourselves in a world that needs so much healing and so much intention and careful intention to bring freedom and to bring justice to everybody. So we join together in these words of Micha Mocha as we remember our own journey from slavery to freedom and remain inspired to help others on their journey. As we reach evening in our day, we pray these words of Hashki Venu. Always when we feel vulnerable, we ask God to spread over us a shelter of peace, a sukkah, which in and unto itself is a fragile structure, one open to the elements. And when we observe Sukkot, we know that the starlight comes in and the heat and the desert and the rain. Sukkah is intended to be a place where we feel the elements. We're not immune to them, but we are protected. And we feel a sense of comfort from that protection of the leaves and the community and the fragile things, which help us to feel a little bit sturdier. So tonight we ask you, God, in our crazy world where we feel not so stable, a little bit wobbly these days, to spread over us a shelter of peace and to give us a sense of stability and hope.
Ashkivenu Adonai Eloheinu L'shalom, L'shalom Ve'amitenu Shomreinu L'chayim Ufros Aleinu Sukkat Shlomecha Ufros Aleinu Sukkat Shlomecha Shelter us beneath thy wings, O Adonai. Guard us from all harmful things, O Adonai. Keep us safe throughout the night, till we wake with morning's light. Teach us daily wrong from right. Oh, Adonai, Amen, 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 Amen. We prepare ourselves now for the Amidah, for the central part of our prayer service. And traditionally, we take three steps back and then three steps forward, approaching or entering into this space of awe. So I invite you to set your kavana, to set your intention for this part of our service and to prepare your heart and your lips to call out to God in whatever way you need to. Adonai sefatai tiftach ufia gita hilatecha. Adonai open up my lips that my mouth may declare your praise. Baruch atah Adonai. Eloheinu, Elohe avoteinu v'yimoteinu, Elohe Abraham, Elohe Yitzchak, Elohe Yaakov, Elohe Sara, Elohe Rivka, Elohe Rachel, Elohe Lea, Ha'el Hagadol, Hagibor v'hanora, El Elyon. Komel chasadim tovim v'konei hakol, v'zochel chaste avot v'imaot, u'mevi geula l'vnei v'neihem, l'man shemo b'ahava. Melech Ozer Moshia Umagen. Baruch Ata Adonai, Magen Abraham, Bezrat Sara. Ata Gibor Leolam Adonai, Mechaye Hakol Ata Rav Lehoshia. Morir Hata, Mashiva Morir Hata. Mechakeh Bechesed, Mechaye Hakol Berachamim Rabim. So Mech Noflim Berofe Holim, O Matir Asurim, O Mechayem Ebunato, Dishene Afar, Micha Mocha Baal Gevurot, O Mido Melach. Melech memit umechaye umat miach yeshua veneeman atal hachayot hakol baruch ata adonai mechaye hakol ata kadosh veshimcha kadosh ukadoshim bechol yom yahalelu chasela baruch ata adonai ha'el hakadosh We'll continue with a few minutes of silent prayer and meditation as we listen to Jonathan's beautiful and prayerful music inspiring us.
us off the air. Here it says, oh, I see, okay. I have been finding it very difficult to get my head around the fact that today is July 31st. It's not exactly that the date has caught me by surprise, though the ongoing reality of every day being Blur's Day has definitely made it more challenging to keep track of the calendar. It's more that I've been grappling with the emotional weight of what it means for July to be coming to an end. So many of the usual July activities were rendered impossible this year by the coronavirus pandemic. No public displays of fireworks on July 4th. No barbecues packed with friends and family. It feels like summer was snatched away, replaced with seas of masks and social distancing and gnawing anxiety about our health, our loved ones, the state of our nation and our world. Loss and longing are very much in the air. So it's apropos this week that we read Parshat Ba'et Hanan, the second portion of the book of Deuteronomy. <clears throat> it's a Parsha that has much to do with longing, not least because it is part of Moses's final speech to the Israelites before they enter the land, something he desperately wishes to be able to do with them, but has been forbidden by God from doing for what seem to be minor infractions. Moses recounts the people's journey from Egypt to the promised land, and some of the lessons they have learned along their way. And included in this retelling is a slightly altered reiteration of Aseret Hadibrot, the 10 utterances or 10 commandments. I was struck this year by the fact that the most enigmatic of these utterances are arguably the first and the last. The first because of what it doesn't say and the last because of what it does say. The first commandment at least by Jewish reckoning, is, I am Adonai, your God, who took you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. I say by Jewish reckoning because we Jews are the only Abrahamic people who consider that statement to be a standalone commandment. The various Christian denominations have various ways of dividing up the commandments, but they all include the next statement, you shall have no other gods before me, as a part of the first commandment. Only we assert that God's self-identification somehow counts as a commandment, despite the absence of any explicit directive. The Ten Commandments conclude, however, with a very clear directive. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, nor shall you desire your neighbor's house, 
his field, his manservant, his maidservant, his ox, his donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. The puzzling thing about this commandment is that unlike the ones that precede it, and indeed most of the 613 commandments in the Torah, it seems to restrict not our behavior, but our thoughts and our feelings. Judaism is generally loath to do this. Jewish law and morality tends to be more concerned with how we behave in the world than with what is in our heads and our hearts. Even the Ve'ahavta, which begins by commanding each of us to love Adonai your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your might, goes on to enumerate the many ways in which we must express our love for God through speaking, teaching, and so on, rather than dwelling on how we feel. Of course, the word covet and its Hebrew analog tachmod are not so easy to define. Do they describe an attitude? Or must desire lead to action, perhaps even violent action, in order to count as covetous? There is some suggestion later in Deuteronomy that the latter may be the case. As the Israelites are preparing to enter the land, Moses commands them not only to destroy the Canaanites' idols, but also not to covet the silver or gold on them and take it for yourselves. Perhaps the problem with coveting is that it leads to taking. Still, in this case, coveting is antecedent to taking rather than being part of taking itself. Many rabbis and commentators, from Rashi to Maimonides to Ibn Ezra, take up this question of how we can understand the prohibition against coveting. And while they disagree as to whether coveting must inevitably lead to action, they agree that coveting itself is essentially something internal, not external. If this is the case, then why is this internal act of coveting so problematic that it needs to be proscribed in this way? And why is this proscription so important as to merit inclusion in the Ten Commandments, alongside prohibitions against things like theft and murder? A possible answer is offered by Rab Rabbi Abraham Joshua Heschel, who links the last commandment to the first under the heading of asserting and ensuring freedom. In his book, The Sabbath, Heschel writes, Nothing is as hard to suppress as the will to be a slave to one's own pettiness. Gallantly, ceaselessly, quietly, man must fight for inner liberty. Inner liberty depends upon being exempt from domination of things as well as from domination of people. There are many who have acquired a high degree of political and social liberty, but only a very few are not enslaved to things. This is our constant problem how to live with people and remain free, how to live with things and remain independent. In a moment of eternity, while the taste of redemption was still fresh to the former slaves, the people of Israel were given the 10 words, the 10 commandments. In its beginning and end, the Decalogue deals with the liberty of man. The first word, I am the Lord thy God who brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage reminds us that our outer liberty was given to us by God. And the 10th word, thou shalt not covet, reminds us that we ourselves must achieve our inner liberty. Heschel's words resonate powerfully for me as I reflect upon these past weeks and months of Zoom services here at Sheriff Israel. Every week when it comes time for us to sing Mi Chamocha, I find myself repeating as much for my own benefit as anyone else's, the idea that while our freedom to act in the world has been harshly curtailed by the pandemic, we still retain many essential freedoms. Freedom to make safe, socially responsible choices, to recommit daily to our values and ideals, to focus our attention on the things and the people we deem deserving. We are living in strange, restricted uh, times, and most, if not all of us, daily long for freedoms we possessed just a few short months ago. And that longing is understandable, even healthy to a degree. Just yesterday, we observed Tisha B'Av, our annual day of mourning for the temples in Jerusalem and for the many losses our people have suffered over the centuries. And I encouraged people to sit with the feelings of loss and longing that have arisen for them during the pandemic and really allow themselves to grieve. 
That grieving cannot go on indefinitely, however. There is a reason why, despite the many, many hardships that have befallen the Jewish people, we designate just one day each year to mourning them all. The Tenth Commandment reminds us that our longing for the things we have lost, the things we cannot have, even longing for freedom itself, runs the risk of becoming its own prison. Of course, the pain of the coronavirus has not affected each of us in the same way or to the same degree. Some of us have suffered financially, while some have remained largely secure. For some, the restrictions and isolation imposed by the pandemic have taken a heavy emotional toll. And for some, the increased opportunities for online connection have been more blessing than curse. Some of us are more or less at risk in terms of our health, age, and other factors. Still, I would, hather, I would, pardon me, I would hazard that all of us have lost something, whether it be an opportunity, a planned vacation, a daily ritual, or a job, a home, or even, God forbid, a loved one. All of us have losses to mourn. Our challenge is to find a way to honor our losses and longings while also learning to live within our current reality. More than ever, we must be vigilant against falling prey to obsessive devotion to unworthy things, and perhaps even to the desire to attack and to take from others what we are struggling to do without. Moreover, when we accept our circumstances, when we free ourselves from wanting what we cannot have and feel we should, we are able to see more clearly what we do have and what we can do to increase our freedom and improve the world we are living in. As we enter into this Shabbat, may we do as Heschel recommends. May we take time to rest, reflect, and appreciate the inherent holiness of our world and our lives. And when Shabbat ends, may we find the strength to rededicate ourselves to the work of improving them. Shabbat Shalom. Asher Kalach, which roughly translates as way to go. Thank you for beautiful words to help inspire us to think about how to refocus ourselves during this very unfocused feeling time. When we come together, we have the opportunity to say a blessing for wholeness, for healing, for those in our lives who are in need of wholeness and healing. And as Rabbi Abby reminded us, there are many different kinds of loss and lack of wholeness for which we pray. On this Shabbat, we pray for a refuah shlema, a feeling of complete return to good health and energy, to Shoshana, Hannah Asher, Dr. Elliot Eisenberg, William Kurian, and Lenore Levin, many people who are an integral part of our community. And for all those in your own hearts and minds who are in need of love and support, we join with the cantor in the words of Misha Berach.
just those in need of healing with refuah shalema the renewal of body the renewal of spirit and let us When we come together as a community, we also have the privilege to share simchas, smachot, wonderful, happy things in our lives. And I wish always at this moment in the service that we were together to call them out and to hear them in our sanctuary. But soon again, we will be. Meanwhile, please feel free to share your smachot on the chat so that everyone can see wonderful things that are happening in everyone's life. And particularly in our community, we celebrate on the Shabbat the arrival of, uh, I was going to say Rabbi, Cantor Glaser, who has been on a long journey to get here, and um, finally joins us in earnest. We're very, very delighted to have you and to have the privilege, really, to have a wonderful new Cantor to inspire us and to, to teach us and to lead us. So we thank God for giving us life and sustaining us and enabling us to reach this wonderful time as we go forward into our future. We'll join together in the blessing. <laughs> Our thoughts now turn to our loved ones whom death has recently taken from us, those who died at this season in years past, and those whom we've drawn into our hearts with our own. Zichronam Libracha, we say, may their memories be a blessing. On this Shabbat, we remember for Shiva and Shloshim, those whom you loved and you mentioned in your homes. The perpetual memorials in our congregation are Sydney Black, Charles Einbund, Mildred Molly Einbund, Ethel Goldberg, Janet Lewis, and Art Rosenberg. If you're observing the first year of mourning for a loved one, please say a name out loud where you are. The art site anniversaries on this Shabbat in our community are Charlotte Blattis, Ruth Braunfield, Elizabeth Fainerman, Inga Frankenstein, Sydney Kluger, Esther Knox, Roger Laser. William Moskowitz, Blanche Perlstein, Myrtle Rubenstein, Frank Stern, Irvin Titel, and those whom you mention now. We join together as one community as we recite words of Kaddish Yatom, thanking God for the privilege of these lives. Yit Kadal v'yit Kadash Shemei Ba, Divra Chirutei v'yamlich Machutei, Vachayachon of Yomechon of Achaye de Holbeit Israel, Vagala Uvisman Kariv Imru, Amen. Heish me Rabba Mavarach Leolam or Mayo Maya. Eat Barach, be Stabach, be Paar, be Dramam, be Nase, be a dar, be a le, be a lal, shme de Kutsha, Brihu. The Elan mean Kol, Birchata, Vishirata, Tushbachata, Venechemata. The Amiran be Alma, Imru, Amen. Yehe Shlama Rabba min Shemaya vechaim aleinu ve'al kol Yisrael ve'imru amen. Hu'se shalom bimromav hu ya'ase shalom aleinu ve'al kol Yisrael ve'al kol yoshvei tevel ve'imru amen. May the one who creates harmony on high bring peace to us, to all Israel, and to all mourners everywhere. And we say together, amen. Please be seated if you are standing. Just a couple of really brief announcements. Tomorrow morning, Rabbi Abby will lead Torah study for a deeper dive into our Torah portion. Please join the community at 9.15. Also, you received today a survey, a very short survey actually, that I had nothing to do with, but I thought was really cool when I opened it myself as a congregant um, about the high holidays. We're really looking forward to hearing some of the Kishka responses that you have, the, the emotional responses. What do you think is most important as we go forward planning our beautiful but very different high holiday services this year? 
And Rabbi Abby, I know you have an important announcement about Studio. I do. I just want to remind everyone that enrollment for Studio is still open. Um, and we are um, offering an early bird discount on tuition through August 5th. And we have a really exciting, robust online program that we're going to start with this fall. We'll see how things evolve in terms of our ability to be in person. But we're actually really you excited about the things. <laughs> I did say robots. You say I don't know who that was, but that was amazing. Um, so we're really excited about this. There's a lot of, of really fun ways that we're going to play with technology. We're going to play with projects. We're going to learn all kinds of new and interesting things together. So if you can join us for studio, please do. If you have any questions, you can shoot me an email. And um, yeah, I'm glad somebody enjoyed the use of the word robust. I think that may be all of our announcements. Thank you to Jonathan. Gordon, do we have anything else to tell the congregation? Um, I think you covered it, in term, especially in terms of the survey. Uh, I'd like to welcome, of course, all of our guests this evening and uh, our member donors. And if you are interested in joining this wonderful congregation, you can surf on over to sheriffisrael.org and find information about how to do that. And we'd love to have you as part of our community. Um, and of course, we, we welcome the many people from, I, I believe we have people from the Southern Hemisphere and the Eastern and Western Hemisphere. So uh, we've got them the globe mapped out. Awesome, and it is time for our congregational birthday boy, I think, to uh, hold up a Kiddush cup. So Rabbi Abby, I'm going to let you introduce our, um, our family that's going to lead us in Kiddush, but I will say, just as you are about to um, introduce these important folks, that uh, our birthday boy is actually a very integral part of our community year-round, not only on his birthday, but throughout the year, he is... Um, our local moyle and uh, serves a very important function for our community. We're so proud to have a reform moyle MD in our congregation. And without further ado, Rabbi Abby, will you introduce? I certainly will. Uh, although you've, you've said uh, so much of the critical stuff. So I'll just say that I'm thrilled to introduce Connie and Dr. Eric Tabus. Um, and Dr. Tabus, of course, is as Rabbi Graf said, the uh, moil uh, that we work with most often here at Sheriff Israel. I have had the pleasure of working with him a couple of times and uh, I admire his professionalism and his good humor. And it's wonderful to be able to celebrate your birthday with you. Happy birthday, Eric. Well, thank you very, very much. I'm really delighted to be celebrating with everyone here. I'm also delighted to be using my kiddush cup for my bar mitzvah. That was in June 25th, 1966. And uh, every time I use our, my kiddush cup, it reminds me of all the happy events that I've gone through in my life and all the people I've shared that with. And I was just going to take a moment to say that my, my um, Torah portion was Korata, which was the Torah portion about Moses strike, striking the rock, and therefore he was not able to go into Israel, as you talked about, Rabbi. So, um, but it's something that reminds me always that the, the benefit of faith, uh, which we all have to have at this time, when it's so very difficult for all of us to be at, at home, and also the value of talking, and that using our words rather than uh, our, our violence or actions, and uh, becomes important in terms of Black Lives Matter and also in terms of the upcoming election. So with that thought, I'd like to leave everyone in a happy thought that we should Say the blessing over wine together. Baruch Atad and I, Alehenu Melech Alam, Borei Ri Hagafen. Chayam. Chayam. Chayam and happy birthday. Ad me'ave is stream to 120 years old. You should be healthy and happy and continue to serve our community. I think also because you were in my breakout room, I was so lucky. The, the rest of the Tabas family is there. Will you introduce us if you pull the screen I'm, back? I'm okay, Abe, there we go. Can you look at the screen? This is our first Abraham, and this is our youngest Jacqueline. Okay. Awesome. Every, everybody's sheltering at home. <laughs> awesome. Home. 
Shabbat shalom, you guys. Shalom. And now um, for a challah, Cantablazer has a very especially delicious challah. Yes, especially delivered from my roommates. No, I'm kidding. Um, but uh, I, I've been very blessed to uh, be staying at the residence of uh, Diane Feldman and Alan Mervis. Um, in a, a, a an in-laws unit they have downstairs and uh, she has for the past few weeks baked me delicious challah along with many other things rugelach and and, and 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 all kinds of stuff so thank you so much to them for hosting me uh, before i finally spread my wings and, and and get my own place in san francisco next week and uh, thank you for the wonderful challah and uh let's uh make a blessing Hamotzi lechem min haaretz b'teavon. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Yes, a very delicious place to stay, not a very dietetic place to stay, but you couldn't have picked a more delicious place in San Francisco. And so we will conclude Cantor Glazer's first service at Congregation Chair at Israel with Od Yavo. So let's belt it out. I will finish chewing. Give me one second. Let's play some chords. Odiavo shalom maleinu. Odiavo shalom maleinu. Odiavo shalom maleinu ve al kula. Odiavo shalom maleinu. Odiavo shalom maleinu. Odiavo shalom maleinu ve al kula. Zala. Aleno ve al kol haolam, salam, salam, salam. Aleno ve al kol haolam, shalom, salam. Oriyamo shalom aleno, oriyamo shalom aleno, Oriyamo shalom aleinu, Oriyamo shalom aleinu, ve al kula salam. Aleinu ve al kol haolam, shalom salam, salam. Aleinu ve al kol haolam, shalom salam. Shalom. Shabbat shalom, everybody. Shabbat shalom.